Greetings and salutations, citizens of the Strawberry Kingdom. It is I, the Strawberry Lord, and it is time to download your character PDFs and prepare to struggle with Adobe Acrobat or have a paper filled with erased paper marks because we're making a Dungeons and Dragons character today. Now, before we begin, I am contractually obligated to tell you that this is the ND 5th edition we are working with. It's real. Look at the contract here. I would never lie to you. Now, I will be using D&D Beyond to showcase my progress, mainly because its UI is easy to follow, and many players, new and old, will recognize it. But by no means is it mandatory that you use it. I will not show up outside your window and make sure you do it this way, or else. There is no specific correct order to character creation, either. You can pick your class before your race if you want to. First, we have the home page. Moving on, we have the race page. Here you're going to select any race you may want, whether that reason is for- Strawberry Lord, you didn't go over the home section. Well, annoying voice I created to mock any critics, that's because the home page has absolutely nothing I can assist with. Whether it's a character name, rules that depends on whatever campaign you're playing, or personal preference, I can't give you a correct answer. Plus, for those printed PDF folks, there is no home section in the first place. But I guess if I have to say something, a Vict Mac, you should probably set your level up to XP because it's easier to change to milestone than vice versa. Now back to race like I was saying! Here, you're going to select any race you may want, whether that reason is for roleplay, stats, whatever. Again, there's no correct answer, but a great starting point is human because they're easy to make. Maybe you'll be called basic, but this is the basics, so that's what you get for trusting me. Now each race has its own traits, like ability score increases, languages, and usually some other stuff. But I picked human because I'm lazy and now I can explain less. But it's okay, because unless you're memorizing every line in every D&D source book, you'd have to read up on each trait anyway. So let's talk about the common denominator. So ability score increases. Races tend to excel in one of D&D's six stats. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. Or Stradixcon and Twizja. Remember that. Every player uses it. Trust me, I already said I would never lie to you. In this case, humans get one score increase for each ability score. What's an ability score, and what do they do? We'll get to that. You can always refer back to different parts if necessary, the algorithm demands it. What about languages? They're exactly what you think they are. Most languages are either spoken by the race of the same name, or the origin place it comes from. Except common, which is the language everyone at the table speaks, like English, Spanish, French, or Klingon. What? You don't speak Klingon? Impossible. You're playing D&D. &D. Ergo, you equals nerd. I'm allowed to say that because I played video games on this channel and used AI for ideas, pretending that I was creative. I have achieved PEAK NERD. Next up is class. There's a lot to cover here, but if you think I'm detailing each class after my lack of race info, you have clearly underestimated my vice of sloth. Pull up your copy of the player's handbook, or if you're poor, look it up and skim through any details you need like proficiency, HP, ideal ability scores, spells, and so on. If all of that sounds scary, pick Fighter. It is the noob class, aka the I attack with weapon, then I attack with weapon, then I attack with weapon, and then I- Now I won't go over Fighter here, because A, it's a tangent, and B, did I mention I'm lazy? No, I'm lazy. But if you really want to know, I should be making a video on the specific class later. If you don't see it, then go grab your time machine and skip ahead of time. So now you're done with class- JUST KIDDING, GOTCHA! With me, it's never so simple. Each game will start at some level. Sometimes it's 1, 3, 5, or if your DM is sadistic like me, 20. Hey, you! Yes, you! Gavin! I know it's you typing, but what about multi-classing? This is the basics! The BASICS! We'll do that another video. Now how you handle leveling is dependent on class, but honestly your best call is still to refer to the player's handbook or your good friend Google, for whom I have no reason to praise even if I am using their service and I don't know why you'd think so. 
Hey guys, you are waiting and do I have the news for you? It's ability score time! There are three common ways to make ability scores, and I will order them from which ones I think are best to worst, which also happens to be objective fact because I determine all things. The first is rolled or manual, where you roll dice like the game was meant to be played. The second is point buy, where you spend points of your scores for balancing reasons or because you keep getting ridiculously low or high rolls. And the last and third is standard array, where you are too lazy to create the numbers and have it already done for you. I don't like being lazy, and I don't think I've given you any reason to think that I do. Let's go over standard array first. You get six values to distribute to whichever scores you want. 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15. That's it, we're done. Next is rolling or manual, where if you hate yourself, you roll 3d6s. Or, if you don't speak D&D, that's the normal looking dice, and then add it up for each stat. If you don't hate yourself, or are a person who has played D&D literally ever, you roll 4 dice instead, and add the highest 3. If you end up with 4 ones, you now have proof that Divine Intervention is real and that it hates you. The last is Point Buy. You get 27 points that you can spend to boost scores. Each score starts at 8. Now, it's not as simple as each point equals one score boost. If I were you, I'd look up a chart and go off of that, but you can also remember that each score increase costs one point each, until 14 and 15, which costs two each. Also, going above 15 is against the Geneva Conventions, and the CIA will find you if you try to. Now, you can also add any ability score increases you would have from race or class here. But wait, I hear the voices in my head asking, what do the scores mean? Well, each score serves a mechanical purpose, so let's cover each one. Strength is your buffness, which affects most physical combat stuff. So, for example, you use strength when you HULK SMASH! Dexterity is your need for speed, which affects some other physical combat stuff that's more special, and your ability to not get hit. So, for example, when you want to you know what happens next. Constitution is your ability to resist illness, have more hit points, and things of that sort. So, for example, it is akin to determine- No. No, I am not doing an Undertale reference. You cannot make me! Intelligence is your book smarts and logic, and is pretty much irrelevant in mechanics unless you are a wizard or an artificer. So, for example, when prompted with the question, Can you speak without using the letter A? You respond, Did you think it would be difficult for me to converse without use of the first letter of the English lexicon? Wisdom is your mental smarts, which is also the thing that protects you from pretty much every magical spell that does something funky to your mind, and helps with a lot of spellcasters, but not as many as you'd think. So, for example, when prompted with the question, can you speak without using the letter A? You respond, yes. Last is charisma, which is not just your social aptitude or ability to seduce the dragon. Charisma is your influence or effect on the world. So, for example, Death is probably not very good with words, but his charisma is very high because he always catches up to you. Now it's important to remember that ability scores don't just affect mechanics, but also something called skills, like acrobatics, deception, and nature. You might have seen them earlier when selecting your race and class, but the good news is whatever you assumed of it was probably correct. Each skill has a specific purpose, but in general they're intuitive. But you can pause here and read up on this cheat sheet if you think that would be easier. But we're not quite done with ability scores yet. Now that we've got each score listed, we need their modifiers. To get those, you subtract 10 from the base score and divide the result by 2, rounded down. Or, like everyone else, look up a chart and go off of that because you don't want to memorize the quadratic formula 2.0. Now, done with ability scores. The next part is the description. Here you can determine a background, which has mild lore implications and gives you some proficiency in things such as skills, languages, or tools. It also may offer recommended traits for your character, but that is ultimately up to you. In general though, you want two distinct personality traits, one ideal, or a value, one bond, or someone or something you're attached to, and one flaw. 
Speaking of traits, this is also where you detail notes about your character, like their appearance, faith, lifestyle, and the alignment system which you see in memes and has absolutely no flaws whatsoever. You can also put notes for any associated organizations, allies, enemies, and even the almighty backstory. Now, each DM is different, but a general rule of thumb, have some backstory to work with, but don't write a full-fledged video essay describing in detail what happened to your character. Now we're on to equipment! Now, if you're lazy, you can just pick gold. But in this case, I also find that it is usually the poor choice, pun very much intended. Now you can select certain options for equipment based on your class and background. Most of the equipment is minor stuff that may never come up, like a stick of incense, but it also includes things like a pouch of gold, or the sword you should probably use instead of your fists. And after that, you're done! Well, kinda. See, there's tons of stuff glossed over in these basics because there's tons of nuance for different classes, races, and so on. But, broadly speaking, this is the standard for everything that follows. I hope to create more of these explanations for various D&D things, like those classes and races, but I hope for now that this guide helps you with character creation. Now get lost, I can't end off too nicely because otherwise my image of cynical satirist would be shattered. Strawberry Lord is off to spend his time doing valuable things, like staying in bed for 12 hours. <laughs>